Hello class, welcome to Geometry 3.2, which is all about translations. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the properties of a figure before and after a translation. So a translation is when you is a transformation in a plane that maps all points of a pre-image to this, um, the same distance and in the same direction. So again, this is a, a form of that rigid motion where your shape should look exactly the same before and after you move it, okay? So if you start to get any images that don't match what you started with, check your points, okay? Um, so a translation, we sometimes call them a slide. You, it's just like um, if it were laying on top of a coordinate plane and you just took it and moved it right along, that's basically a translation. You're not flipping it. You're not rotating it. You just slide it one way or the other, okay? Now, let's talk about finding the image of a translation. So what is the graph of translation 3, negative 4 of triangle EGW? So first, before we even do that, I want to draw attention to this type of notation. So if you see a T... And then you see these kind of parentheses, the ones that look like the less than or greater than symbols. That stands for translation, okay? So that means translation. And that three happens to be what you will combine with your x value. And then that negative four is going to be what you combine with your y value. And then the second part where it has the triangle EGW, that tells you which figure you are moving. Or which figure you are um, applying a transformation to. Okay, so let's start with, let's write down where each of our points are. So E is at 0, 3, W is at 1, 2, 3, negative 4, comma, 2, and G is at negative 4, comma, 0. Okay? So the reason I'm putting that down is I'm going to start with that x value, and I'm going to say plus 3. And then I'm going to take my y value, I'm going to say 3 plus a negative 4. So I took that 3 and put it there, and I took this negative 4 and put it right there. Okay? So I'll do that for all of them. So then I would have negative 4 plus 3. And then I would have, uh, let's see, 2 plus negative 4. And my last one, I'd start with a negative 4 plus 3. And I have 0 minus, plus a negative 4. Okay. So my point E ends up at 3, negative 1. My... W value ends up at negative 1, comma, negative 2, and my G value ends up at negative 1, negative 4. Okay? That's where they should end up. So let's see. If I plot a point at 3, negative 1, let's see. Did I move it 3 in the positive direction? So notice that this 3 was positive, right? So that means that we're going to move right three units, and this negative four means we're going to go down four units, okay? So if I go right three, one, two, three, then I'm going to go down four, one, two, three, four. Here is my E prime. And just like yesterday, once you've moved a point, you add that prime to it. All right, now let's do the same thing for W. Um, it should be at negative 1, 2. So that means it should be right down here. So if I go right 3, 1, 2, 3, and down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, it matches. So I know I am 
good to go. And then G should be at negative 1, negative 4. So my G prime should be right there. And then I connect my dots just like I did yesterday. I don't want to forget that. And that is the translation. You can see it's the same shape. It's just been, it's like it slid over. So sometimes I will give you just a picture and I'll say graph this translation. And sometimes I will give you the coordinates and I, I will say what are the new coordinates of this translation. That's why I did both here in this example. You're not typically going to do both the coordinates and the graph all at um, once but I wanted to show you both ways. So why don't you do this first question, find the image of a translation. Hopefully you ended up with E prime at one negative three, F prime at five negative two, and G prime at four negative eight. If not, please, please be sure to reach out for some help and I'm happy to help you. Let's look at example two. We wanna write a translation rule. What is the translation rule that maps KFDI to K prime, F prime, D prime, I prime. So I want to look and see how has this moved. So let's start right with K. So there's K, and then here is the blue, is, the blue dot is K, and then also the purple dot is K prime. And I want to know how did I move from the blue dot to the purple dot. So we always start with our X movements. Um, so I'm moving one, two, three to the right. And three to the right means that I'm going to do a positive three. And then I'm moving down, so I know this is going to be a negative number. I move down one, two, three units. So I'm going to write it with that T. And then I'm going to say, um, use the less than or greater than symbols for my parentheses. That tells me that I'm doing a translation. I'm going to move three to the right and three down. Let's check to see if that applies to all of them. So F to F prime, I'm moving one, two, three right, one, two, three down. From D to D, D to D prime, I'm going one, two, three, one, down one, two, three. So that matches. And checking from I to I prime, I'm going right one, two, three, and down one, two, three. So I know that that translation is good for all of them. So this is my translation rule. All right. What translation rule maps triangle CFP to triangle C prime, F prime, P prime? Hopefully you said that translation moved in the positive six um, direction. So it moved to the right, right six units, and it didn't move up or down. So I'm going to use a zero. Do not just do this. This answer right here is wrong. You have to have an X and a Y. Okay? So even though it's zero, don't forget your Y. All right. So then let's talk about what it looks like when we have a composition of rigid motion. So meaning more than one motion in a problem. Okay? So this is where you have two or more rigid motions in which the second rigid motion is performed on the image of the first rigid motion. So a common, a common issue that I see, first let's understand this notation. So we have this parentheses, and then we have R. That's going to stand for reflect, and then over line L, reflection over line L. And then this open circle here means composition. It's mean, it means that we're combining two transformations together, okay? So that, that open circle there is what tells you that it's a composition. And all that means is you're going to have more than one action happening to this um, original pre-image. And then T still stands for translation, and we have negative 2, 5, and this is happening on triangle ABC. So your first step, you translate triangle ABC left 2 units and up 5 units. 
So you start here. You don't start with the first thing that's written. You don't start with that reflection. You start with the item that's closest to whatever image you're moving. So in this case, that triangle ABC. Since we're doing the translation is written right next to that triangle, we start there. Once we have done that translation, then you take that new translated image and you do the reflection of that image. So step two is to reflect that image that you just got, okay? So that's what that all means. Let's try to compose some translations. So in learning a new dance, Kyle moves from position A to position B, and then from position, uh, and then to position C. What single transformation describes Kyle's move from position A to position C? So if we're going from A to B, we end up moving, we do a translation, we end up going positive 2, we go to the right 2, and then we also go up 2. And then from B to C, our translation is we go positive 1 and we go negative 1. We go down 1, right? So if we were to combine those together, what is our overall translation? So if we were to write that as a composition, that would be a composition, uh, we're just using the points x, y, right? Just wherever they are, left and right, and then vertically. We would do the 2, 2 translation first, and our composition, we would write the 1, negative 1 at the beginning. So that would be our composition. But if I want to write it as a single thing, what I can do is I can add my x values together. So I have a 2 and a 1. I can say that I'm going to have a translation that moves 2 plus 1 is 3. And then I can say 2 plus a negative 1 or 1 is going to be my overall translation, and that's when you move from letter A. So if I test that out, if I take this letter A position, and I go right one, two, three, and then I go up one, did I end up at letter C? Yes. So I know that that is the correct overall translation for this situation. If I had asked you to write it as a composition, this right here would be your answer. But since I asked what single transformation, this is what I would look for. Translation is 3-1. Why don't you go ahead and um, rewrite this composition of the transformations in, as one transformation. Hopefully for your answer, you got a translation of 4, negative 3. You added your 3 and 1, your x values together, and then you added your negative 2 and negative 1 together, your y values, to get that negative 3. All right, now let's look at our last example. We want to relate translations and reflections. So if we did a composition of multiple reflections, so we reflect across two lines that are parallel, in this case, we're reflecting over the y-axis first, so you can see step one, reflect over the y-axis. So I'm taking this triangle and I'm reflecting it over the y-axis all the way over here. Then my step two, I took that reflected image and I reflected over this other vertical line. Remember, all vertical lines are going to be parallel, right? They should never touch. If they do touch, they're not both vertical. So if I reflect this image 
over that line now, I end up right there at that red triangle. Now, something to note is when you do that, if you look at what you started with and what you ended with, you can see those shapes are facing the same direction and can be written as a translation, right? They're all going to move the same number of spaces, the same distance. There's a trick to finding out how far it'll move without having to actually do all of those reflections can save you a lot of time. So if you take the distance between your parallel lines, so here's my y-axis, and here is the second line that I'm reflecting over. If I count that distance, so it's one, two, three, four, it's four units. If you double that number, so four times two would give me eight, that tells me that my translation would be eight units. Okay, so the distance between your parallel lines, if you double it, should give you the translation. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That worked for C. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It worked for A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It worked for B as well. Okay, so if you take the distance between your parallel lines and double it, you can save yourself the trouble of reflecting twice and do a single translation instead. So that translation would be 8, 0 in this case. If you have any questions at all about today's lesson, please be sure to reach out for some help. I'm more than happy to assist you. Have a great day.